Okay, we're gonna make the flying butterfly. So uh, we're gonna need the side body, which is here. That's gonna get scaled down. And we're gonna need the wing. Now, the critical with the wing, we need to get it into position. They're both gonna need to be 3D layers. So turn those on. Uh, when we're looking at the wing, we wanna get it into position, not by moving the rotation, but by moving the orientation, critical. Don't move the rotation, move the orientation to get it in position. So now let's go ahead and move this anchor point to where it should be. Always get check your anchor points first. Right about there. Okay, and let's change this orientation about there and about there. And now position V is down. Good. Because I did the orientation, now if I go to rotation, it should still be rotating correctly on the y-axis. Cool. Now, it does pass out of the frame. We don't want that. So everything needs to get scaled down a little bit. So let's scale this down about right there. And let's scale the body down as well. There we go. And the wing, this wing will be the back wing behind the body. And I'm going to go ahead and make a second one and put that. Oops. Not the body. You need to duplicate the wing. CV. There we go. And uh, rotation. There we go. All right, great. So again, we should just be able to um, rotate the rotation here. Uh, let's do that. So I got, uh, let's set up the parenting, just to be sure. So the wings need to be a parent of the body. Mm, body, there we go. And now uh, R, R, just going to need to do Y rotation on both of them. And so there, and then they should flap down. And the top one, kind of like so. And they should get back to the original position. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Shall see Control V, Control C, Control V. And then another flap that's slightly different timing and slightly different values, just so it looks a little bit more. And then again, getting back to the original. Control C, Control V, uh, Control C, Control V. There we go. And let's get these keyframes looking good. Come in here. Grab all this, ease it. Drag that one a little bit this way, this one a little bit this way. There we go. And probably I need to be a little bit faster than that. Go hold down Alt, smoosh it in a little bit. There we go. We're gonna need motion blur for this one. So if we look at what this looks like with motion blur, there we go, that's not bad. Nice. And we need to do the same thing. Loop the animation. Alt click the stopwatch. Select property loop out. All right, it only did it to one. Maybe it only selects one property. Property loop out. There we go. Excellent. Cool. And so we've got uh, 10 seconds of that. And now we want this butterfly to be flying along the path. Cool. And so now let's come back to our scene. And we want to have our butterfly flying across here. So uh, let's create a path for that to happen. 
And let's zoom out a little bit. I'm going to get uh, all this stuff here. Let's pre-compose this. And this is a uh, background. There we go. Great. Now, let's go ahead and make a path. There we go. And uh, let's bring in our flying butterfly. There we go. And we want our flying butterfly to travel this path. And so we take our shape here. We can even turn off its visibility. We're just interested in the path. Control C. And under the butterfly here, uh, position. Select Control V. And it travels the path. Let's look at that. Cool, that's pretty good. Let's see, we do want it to change some more moving with the path. Let's get our anchor point worked out first, actually. So I'm gonna make sure that the anchor point for my flying butterfly is at the body, which makes sense. And now I'm gonna copy the flight path to here. And so now the body, ah, something I messed up. Here we go. Yeah, this anchor point just got way off. I'm not sure what happened there. Here we go. Put this back on the body. There we go. Control C and uh, Control V. There we go. Now it's moving. Now let's say we want to make sure that the butterfly orients towards the path. You can do that by right click. <clears throat> I wish this were more obvious, but there's a bunch of things like this in um, After Effects. And so we pasted that on there. Right click on the layer, not on position, on the layer. Transform, auto orient. Should be more obvious, but it's not. And so now, a long flight path, okay? You'll see that it will orient to the path. Now it's upside down and backwards, so we can fix that with the rotation. So this is essentially an offset, but now, There we go. Cool. It's a little bit too linear. We need it to be a little bit more um, irregular. And so let's go ahead and uh, there's a great uh, object for this. Anything you time you want random movement in After Effects. In After Effects, it's technically called a wiggle. So there's a bunch of wiggle things and that means it's gonna randomly move stuff. And so um, let's go ahead and uh, wiggle this. And so if I have this butterfly here, it's an effect. Come over here to wiggle, transform. If you just type in wiggle, there it is, position. Duplicate. And let's get it to where it's on the screen. Wiggle speed is how fast it uh, wiggles probably let's try like four wiggles per second and this is the amount it's deviating from the path and so now there you go you see you get more a little bit more random and let's give it some motion blur maybe a little bit too much wiggling let's just say 50 There we go. Cool. That's great. Now we're able to, um, here's the keyframes for this. Uh, we're able to uh, 
create some, let's say this is a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to hold down Alt, move this back a little bit. Maybe not quite that long. A little bit too much wiggling. There we go. Um, let's add some more. And let's keep it more upright. So under that rotation parameter, instead of having it, even when it goes down, let's have it face a little bit further up. There we go. I like that better. Cool. Now we can make, since we use the wheel transform, if we copy and paste this a bunch of times, uh, the wheel transform should do different random per, it does a little bit. Let's go ahead and sequence these a little bit. And uh, we can move them up and down if we have all the keyframes selected. And so now I could We have all the keyframes selected. Otherwise, you're just going to make a new keyframe. No, it's not liking this with. Let's make sure it's over one of the keyframes right there. Yeah, it's got to be lined up with one of the keyframes and then you move it. Yeah, sometimes. Let's move this one. Position. Yeah, line it up with the beginning keyframe. Select all the keyframes. And now you can move that one. There we go. And let's make another one. Yeah, just sort of sequencing them like so. Let's get this one, select all the keyframes. Move this one up like this. Move this one. Position. Grab all of them. And uh, make sure we're over top of one of the keyframes. That one here. There we go. And now we've got a sort of flock of flock. Uh, I'll have to look that up. There's probably a name for. There we go. Which one is not getting far enough? This one. might take them all and copy paste and then run back and uh, control C control V and do something like this nice we're only gonna see a few seconds of this and so We've got that moving across the screen. Great. Maybe take some of them and create a sense of depth with a little bit of scale. So I'm going to go ahead and just select a few. Hit S and make them a little bit smaller. And maybe select a few other ones just using Control S and make those a little bit bigger. There we go. Cool, and that we got the flying scene. So let's do one more and we'll put all of our scenes together.